Well, it's called Melanoma May by some health experts. And as the weather gets warmer, we are starting to spend some more time outside. And it's always important to know how to take care of your skin and to know what to look out for. Joining us now to talk more about the dangers of melanoma, we have Kaiser dermatologist, Dr. Akil Wadhera. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely, happy to be here, Claudine. You know, so it's interesting when we talk about a day like this that we're getting, it's not a bright, sunny day, and we have learned, and we've been telling people, right, still dangers out as, we, as you spend any time outside and protecting yourself. How well-informed do you think we are as a, as a public in terms of protecting ourselves? I, I think there's more work to be done, is what I would say. As a Kaiser Permanente dermatologist, um, we early detection of skin cancer and its prevention are really near and dear to my heart. And we see, uh, and skin cancer is one of the most common cancers, and actually, in fact, it's more common than all other cancers combined with one in five, uh, you know, patients will be diagnosed with skin cancer by the time they're 70. So um, I think there is room. We can do better. Um, do you think it's, it's also important because it's so it's preventable? So we have all these cases of skin cancer, but you know, in this case, in the cases of skin cancer, there are things that we can do to protect ourselves, and some very simple things that we can do. Uh, do you think that you know? I mean, certainly as the education comes out, you know, it's interesting. I, I just saw a a study that said the top states with the highest rates of skin cancer, Utah, Vermont, Minnesota, New Hampshire, Iowa, the sunny states actually are, are doing better maybe because people are just more aware? I, I think that is definitely a reason, but also it's more, the, the, there are some of the more, you know, those states are more diverse, so we are naturally some, our, our darker skin types are a little bit more better protected. Mm. But in terms of, how, you know, what we can do definitely because 80 to 90% of skin cancers are caused by ultraviolet radiation, which is mostly coming from the sun, I think there are definitely things that we can do to protect ourselves. And a lot of our uh, member, a lot of our viewers think that it's um, just sunscreen, application of sunscreens. But as dermatologists, we think of total protection, which actually includes avoiding sun between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., if you can't, because there's graduations going on and yes. barbecues, <laughs> you, you, you try to seek shade. You know, there's canopies and there's trees that you try to seek shade. If you can't get shade, you're out there camping and you're out in the open sun, then you try to dress better and cover as much as you can. Yeah, light, and then long if you've done sleeves, all of right? these, light long sleeves wearing and, long and pants, sleeves, even though you don't want to, funny. but <laughs> that's important, a hat. Wearing a wide-brimmed hat, exactly. Not a baseball hat, but a wide-brimmed hat to protect your uh, ears as well. And then if you've done all those three things, you definitely want to do sunscreens. And, and a lot of our viewers may not, you know, when we go to the department stores, there's just a wall of sunscreen. It's really confusing can be confusing to some people as to which one do I pick? And I get this question a lot from our patients. Uh, which one do I choose? So I have some simple rules, Claudine. Oh, so those are good for us because we help. Yeah, I think it, it is confusing. People always go the higher number, the better. But I, I think it's it's less complicated than that. Right. So, so the first thing I tell my patients is always use a broad spectrum sunscreen, which protects you both from UVA and UVB. And UVA is the aging rays and B is the burning rays, just for simple, you know, trying to remember that. Uh, so that's number one, to you look for the term broad spectrum in on the bottle. The second thing, you want to look for water resistance. A lot, you know, with the summer coming up, a lot of people do uh, pools, beaches, and, and we sweat a lot. So definitely you want to use a water resistant sunscreen. And then finally, the SPF number is very important as well. So we as dermatologists recommend at least an SPF 30 um, uh, as a minimum to use uh, on your skin and your face. Uh, and, and then the other thing that we don't do well um, is, is how much to use, right? <laughs> a lot of my patients have that question, like, how much do I use, doc? Uh, and so the simple, it's a teaspoon rule, basically. And you, you should use about one teaspoon for the face and neck and a couple teaspoons for your chest and back and then another teaspoon for your arms and then two teaspoons. So, to cover your full body does take eight to nine teaspoons, which could yeah. be an ounce and a half. 
So just remember, uh, you know, we got to do it correctly. Uh, just yes. using sunscreen doesn't do the job. You got to do enough sunscreen. Those are great tips, very practical, a lot of teaspoons, uh, but, but good for our health and good for prevention. And I'm sure for the young people, too, to remind them, because I think that may be the hardest group to remind that that that. You know, if you uh, don't do it now, you will pay later. And certainly we want everyone to stay healthy. We have to leave it there. Dr. Wadera, thank you so much for joining us and giving us that great advice. Uh, to make sure we uh, protect ourselves as summer comes upon us. Thank you, Claudine. Happy to be here. All right. Time now.